Hello everybody. Today is the day you're finally going to understand the circle of fifths. I'm going to explain how you put one together, why it matters to you, and how it can help you if you are an improvising musician, songwriter, composer, or something like that. Now, mysteriously, the whole point of the circle of fifths is to give you a sort of graphic, a picture, which helps you understand the relationship of one key to another. So you can see which ones are close together and which ones are further apart. But for something which is supposed to make life simpler, an awful lot of people find it very, very baffling, as though they're standing on the top of a mountain, looking out in fog, with sunglasses facing in the wrong direction. So what I'm going to do today is whip off the sunglasses, get rid of the fog and point you in the right direction so you understand how the whole thing works. Let's get started. Here is a circle. It's divided into 12 segments. 12 is a magic number you may remember because if you look at your keyboard, uh, an octave is divided into 12 half steps. Look, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and then back to one again. Half steps or semitones. So that distance there is a half step or a semitone. That distance there is a half step or a semitone. Put two half steps together and you get a whole step or a tone. So that to there is a tone, that to there is a semitone. Whole tone, whole step, half step. That will become relevant very quickly. Okay, so let's put, let's say for the sake of argument, middle C um, at the top of the circle of fifths. Right. Um, now, how you build the circle of fifths is relatively straightforward as long as you know uh, how to do scales. So let's start with C major. Here we go. So we're going to go up five notes up the scale of C major, So, which is pretty straightforward because C major is just white notes on the piano. Okay, right. So let's let's start on C. Okay, and go up um, five notes. So one, two, three, four, five. So five takes us to G. Okay. Now, the key is when you go round five notes to the next one, there we go, to G. What we're going to start on, on this one now, is G in the key of G. So we're going to play a scale of G starting on G. Ready? Okay, now up five from there. One, two, three, four, five, which takes us to D. So, yep. D is the one which goes next. So as you go round, each one becomes the new starting note in the new key. Okay, so this, as I say, this is not about notes, it's not about chords, it's about keys and how they relate to each other. So when you fill the whole thing in, it looks like that. Now, what's going on there is that as you go round the circle, uh, the keys become more and more different until when at the time you get to the bottom they've got almost nothing in common whereas the ones at the top have got lots in common and that's the point because if you're an improvising musician composer songwriter whatever you need to know what keys are close to each other so if you're going to try and change key or you want to you know the bridge to your song wants to be in a different key what are the ones which are going to be closest to you and which are the ones going to be furthest away and most jarring and this is really what it's all about um, so the ones closest together have got lots in common and the ones furthest away have got very little in common. This is how it works in practice. So if we go back to that scale thing again, this is why I said, you know, the whole. So remember, a scale is merely a pattern of intervals. If you want to play a scale, start on C and then what you're going to do is you're going to go, um, if you're American, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. So two whole steps and a half step three whole steps and a half step. If you're in the UK, hello everybody, um, we're going to talk about whole, uh, tones and semitones. So you go tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone, two tones and a semitone, three tones and a semitone. If you play that order of intervals and start anywhere on the keyboard, you will always get a major scale because that's what a major scale is. If we start on C and you go whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, you can play the major scale just on the white notes. So far, so good. Um, if we now go and start on G, for example, okay, there we go, start there. Let's do whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step. Now, the next whole step, look, takes us to a black note, which is F sharp. So in order to be able to play the scale of G major, we have to use an F sharp, one sharp, okay. Hmm, what happens if we go one step round the circle of fifths to D? Let's start on D. Whole step, whole step. Or t uh, let's do the European version this time. Tone, tone takes us to the F sharp. Semitones. Tone, tone, 
another tone takes us to that C sharp there. So in order to play D major, we have to use two sharps. So C has no sharps and all white notes. G has one sharp, one black note. D has two. Take a wild guess how many sharps you need to play a scale of A. Correct. How many sharps do you need to play E major? Correct, four. So as you go round, you increase the number of sharps. But it's more than that. What you're, you're not just increasing the number of sharps. Every time you do that, you're changing one note in the scale, which makes it one note different, more different uh, to the scale where you started. So we started out with all white notes. And by the time we end up right at the bottom of the, uh, of the circle of fifths, it's every single note is different. That's the whole point. See what I mean? That the circle of fifths is all about, um, is about keys, not notes or chords, and it's about which chords, which scales and keys are similar and which ones are different. That's really the whole point of the thing. That's what it's all about. So there it is laid out. And you can see when you get to the overlappy bit at the bottom, it's a right car crash because uh, C sharp and D sharp over, a uh, D, D flat overlap. So one has five flats, the other has seven sharps. And, and you can see that it's a real mess at the bottom. Don't worry about that for the time being. So and looking at this in, so why does this matter? Um, and how can you think about it? Okay, so look, if C is your immediate family, your brothers and sisters, mum, dad, all the rest of it, okay. Um, one step out, uh, those are your friends. Those are the people you'd asked you into a party at Christmas or whatever else, or whatever else, other celebration you have. Um, going one out from that, mm, uh, are these your Facebook friends, your Instagram followers, whatever. Then one out from that, ooh, these are some random strangers you play online games with. Okay, by the time you get down to the bottom, and this is the interesting, this is like um, online dating hell. So the algorithm's gone wrong, um, and you're going, you know, C's going out for uh, a nice drink with F sharp, and you go, oh, hello, uh, how are you? Um, I gather you're a fellow vegan. Oh, no, actually, I'm a cattle farmer. Oh, embarrassing silence. Uh, well, at least uh, we both love opera. Uh, no, I love hip hop and crunk. Even longer embarrassed silence. So the point is, from one side of the circle to the other is dating hell, whereas close together is, hey, you're great. You know, like, you know, that's, this is a really weird analogy. Why did I go down this road? Anyway, it, uh, that's really what the circle of fifths is about. It's a guide to dating. There is an inner circle. Oh, no, just when I was getting it. No, it's all right. You still got it. You still got it. You still got it. Do you remember uh, when I was talking about in the last video, um, relative minors. A relative minor um, <laughs> is not your uncle who works in a, in a stop it guys, stop it. Is, he works in a coma. Um, it's this, um, it's a minor scale which shares the same notes as the major scale. So if you start with C, for example, as we're quite fond of C major, what minor scale can you use which just uses the white notes? Correct. Um, those of you who've been paying attention to how to write, uh, learn music theory, um, A minor. So if you start on the A, you can play a natural minor scale in A. And so they use exactly the same notes. And this happens all the way around the circle. So for example, if we look at G, it says here, apparently, that if we use the same notes as G major, we can play an E minor natural scale. Okay. And lo and behold, so we can. So the inner circle are the relative minors. And you will notice, of course, not surprisingly, they also go up by a fifth each time. Okay. So far, so good. Now, you remember when we started, however many minutes ago that was, that I said, ah, oh, you've got to think about these as keys. They're not notes or chords. Or... Okay, let's just for one moment set that to one side and say, let's think about them as chords. Now, do those three... Uh, chords up the top look remotely familiar. C, F and G. Indeed, anybody who's tried to play songs or, you know, on a guitar or anything else will know that chords 1, 4 and 5 are pretty much the centre of the universe. You know, if you can play 1, 4 and 5, you can play almost anything. Okay, those are right next door to each other. One, four, and five are their best buddies next to each other. Oh, now let's look at those relative minors. Uh-oh, 
A minor, D minor, and E minor. So what we've actually got are all, bar one, the uh, chords you can form on the white notes in C major. So if you look at C, there's a C major triad. Hang on, shall we, shall we try that one? See, there's a C major triad. D, mi D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor. And the one we don't mention, B diminished. Before getting back to C. But you see how the circle of fifths now tells you what chords are going to, what chords and what keys are going to be most close to each other, which ones you're going to find it easy to kind of schmooze your way into. So if you're not working in C, you're in A, for example, this tells you that A, D and E are um, both good chords to use and they're also easy keys to transition into and that the minor chords you should be looking at are B minor, F sharp minor and C sharp minor. This is where it starts to get useful. Uh, you're now saying to yourself, is that it? Is that it? That's all there is to it. I got it now, but I don't quite understand why it's so useful. As you go on, you will start, when you're starting to write something and you're trying to think of things through, it just gives it a bit of shape and structure. So when you finally, uh, are, you're trying to get out of that one, four, five, or one, five, six, four chord progression thing, you're looking for interesting things as we all do, hopefully, um, what you're actually going to do is maybe think about the circle of fifths as a way of, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. I can think of some interesting directions to go in. There you go. That's the circle of fifths for you. That's all there is to it, really. I mean, uh, I told you. Are you now? Are you still standing on top of a mountain looking at the fog with your sunglasses on looking in the red direct wrong direction? No, you're not. If you like this uh, slightly... Um, eccentric approach to music theory you might like my course learn music theory you'll find details of it underneath uh, this video and if this is the kind of way you enjoy learning music theory then why aren't you subscribed oh you are great you're a member of the secret brotherhood of learn music theory people right that's all i've got for you for today um any questions or misunderstandings or anything else post them in the comments underneath and i'll do my best to answer you see you soon Bye bye